Here at Croston Engineering, they make mold and tools for a huge range of products, but exactly what are those products, please, Colin? Well, there are a lot of products for the medical industry, and we do a lot of stuff for um, the floor, floor tiles, um, car mats, just general anything indeed, you know. But yeah, anything. And this is something people might be seeing uh, in their everyday lives, so a floor mat. They wouldn't mats, be, they would or... be well, you, you, you might walk into a gym, and you, we have done the floor mats that would um, be in that gym. Um, even medical stuff, you'd see even programs on TV, and the medical stuff we make would maybe feature on it. I love it. So you might be watching Casualty, and you'll see something that's made <laughs> it here across <laughs> engineering in Belfast. And that's what I love about Ireland and the West Coast, especially yep, yep, the North yep. Coast. You guys export all around the world, this, this small do, island do, in the West, indeed, of, yep. West of Europe. Yep, yep, it's, it, it's, it's brilliant. Um, and what requirements do, you, do your customers replace on you? What requirements do mold tools have when you're manufacturing them? What do you have to worry about? Well, it's mainly just um, machining it to the customer's specifications. Um, or it be roughing it and leaving material on for a blasted finish, or whether you have to machine it to a real fine finish. It just depends um, on what the customer's looking. Yeah. So it's, and, and these fine finishes, it's not just the surface finish as well. What about the dimensional tolerances? Are there any special functional faces yeah, on the parts? Yeah, the, the shutout faces have to be 100%. Uh, um, we would be cutting on the angles with maybe a minus 0.02 of a millimeter aside just to get the, the mold to shut out. And what does that mean? What is a shut-off face? It's where the two faces have to meet together airtight so no plastic can escape, so pretty much. Okay, and if that didn't happen, then what, if, if, if those two faces didn't meet, then what would happen to the part that would come out? Oh, there'd be flash on it. Then you'd be in the stripping, the stripping the tool down, putting it back on the machine, recutting it again, uh, lifting it off, blowing it out in the bench, make sure you're getting what you need to get. And would that be a high cost to the customer who's going to be making, trying to make loads of parts every day? Yeah, it would be. The rework would be a cost to ourselves. So it would, you know, until we get the, the tool right to and the customer gets a, a part that they're satisfied with. Absolutely, so you so. want to make sure that the, the, these parts go out correctly and those shot faces especially, as yep. well as the, the component cavity itself, need to be absolutely correct. 100%, yep. Could you talk me through a process of how you make one of these molds, especially this is kind of the functional part we got in front of us here. What's the process through the shop floor to produce one or something like this? Well, um, the material would come in and we would, uh, depending on the material removal, how much, well, or we would put it into one of our VM matches on rough it down, semi-finish, and then we'll get into the BX for its fast um, feeds and speeds for finishing it off. Or if it's a smaller mold like it's on the machine the minute there, it would have been four tacks machined in this machine and then semi-finished and finished. And what about the machine makes it a good finisher? What do you need from a machine like this? Well, it needs to be accurate um, and we're looking for high feeds and speeds and accuracy throughout the whole job. So we've found with it being a double column bridge style machine, it is very rigid and um, it gives us what we're looking for. And what would happen if the machine wasn't quick enough at doing these kinds of scanning tool paths? Well, it'd be um, with only having the one BX40 I, that size in the workshop, um, there'd be a build up of um, jobs waiting to go through the machine. So we do need a machine that puts the jobs out as quick as possible and as accurate as possible. Absolutely, and if we look at the machine now, it's got this kind of interesting uh, corner style door system, yep. meaning you can get the parts in. Yep. Um, but it's actually, the part right now is it's a big part, but it's not the biggest part you can get on this machine, is it? No, no, um, we do cut aluminium car mat molds in the machine, which would be 900 millimeter on the X and 600 millimeter on the Y. Wow, so, so it's almost a meter by half yep, a meter. Yep, yep, it is indeed, yep. So, and um, you program them, maybe we're running for 20 plus hours. So the weight. Yeah, so, so. so long cycle times. Yep. And what about the accuracy over the course of a 20 hour cycle where the machine is constantly running? Yep, 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 I'd be accurate. Very accurate with maintaining that door. And then um, cutting the, the car mop mold, you maybe you end up using six or seven, maybe eight different tools, mm -hmm. ranging from 16 mil um, ripper aluminium cutters down to a two mil or one mil ball nose cutter. Yeah. So you're so. using a wide range of processes yep. as well. Yep. When you're doing those different processes, you're using loads of different tools. How do you make sure those tools are set absolutely bang on? Well, we have got the Ramshaw um, probing system on the machine, so it is very, very accurate, and you can rely on it setting another tool up will be identical to the previous tool. So Brilliant. A good rougher, a good finisher, a machine you can rely on. It's the BX40 from Herco.